Claire from Eclair Makery and today I am going to be teaching you how to crochet my snow leopard poncho. This crochet poncho pattern is a beginner friendly tapestry crochet um, poncho that is perfect for winter or fall and it will keep you so nice and cozy you are going to just love it. I'm so excited to show you how to make this pattern and if you haven't done so already go ahead and hit the like button below and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any of my videos and let's go ahead and dive right in. To make the snow leopard poncho you're going to need two different colors of worsted weight yarn. I am using Wee Crochet's Upcycle Reserve Wool Worsted as well as their Mighty Stitch yarn in worsted weight. This one is in cream and this one is in amarillo. You can use any worsted weight yarn. Um, it will work with any color combination, any worsted yarn brand, um, and these are the ones that I just love these two um, yarn lines from We Crochet, so this is what I will be using. And you'll also need a size I 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, and if you'd like to follow along with this video, you can use the free pattern available on my blog at the link in the description box, or you can grab it from either my Etsy or Ravelry stores as a printable PDF. So once you have your pattern and your yarn together, let's go ahead and get started on making the snow leopard poncho. To start crocheting your poncho, you are going to start out with 127 chain stitches or however many your size says to do. And then we are going to start in the third chain from the hook, which is right here. And we are going to double crochet all the way down this line of chain stitches before we start on the second row. So just go ahead and crochet all the way down in each one of these chain stitches. Just do one double crochet in each one, and then we will start on the next round, row. Once you get to the end of those chain stitches, we are going to start on the next row, which will be on the wrong side of your piece that you are making. So what we're gonna do is start doing some crochet ribbing, and we're going to do this by alternating rows of doing one double crochet and then one uh, front post double crochet and then doing back post double crochets on wrong side rows. So since we are starting on a wrong side row, we are going to begin with a back post double crochet. So to do that, we will do one double crochet. Then what we're going to do is we're going to yarn over. Then you're going to come from the back of what's facing you, come up through that um, the space in between those two stitches and then come out around the post on the outside of the stitch and then we will do finish off our double crochet and then get that gives us our first back post double crochet so you'll notice on here what it does is it creates um, a raised portion here and then what we'll do is you're going to want to make sure that you skip this next um, top of the stitch because we just did the stitch right there and then we're going to go to the next one and do our double crochet and then do the same thing again doing that back post double crochet. So you're going to repeat doing this doing the alternating one double crochet and then one back post double crochet till we get to the very end and then I'll show you how to do the front post double crochet on the other um, side which will be the right side of our project. After you finish that first row of the ribbing, we are going to do the second row. So we'll chain two, turn our work, and then we are going to start with one double crochet. And then this time we are going to do a front post double crochet. So what I like about doing this style of ribbing is that since you did that back post double crochet, the part that you were going to do the front post one is already raised. So you'll yarn over and then go around that post, the one that's raised up, and do your front post double crochet. Then you'll go to the next stitch, do a double crochet, and then a front post double crochet. And so you'll continue doing that all the way across and then do one more row of the back post double crochet rows followed by another round of the front post double crochet rows before we start um, using the next color for this poncho. On the last yarn over of your last row of the ribbing, you are going to switch to your main color by taking the main color 
and then you are going to do like a yarn over here and pull it through those last two loops to finish your double crochet and then we will weave our contrast color there to use um, after we do a few rounds of the main color so to just begin this next portion we aren't going to do any more ribbing instead we are going to be doing just normal double crochets across so you'll just double crochet all the way across keeping any strands of yarn that you have on here on the side that's facing you when you're on a wrong side round and then you'll do two total rows of the cream or your main color before we begin on the next portion of this which will be the color work to start doing the leopard stripes. So once you are done with those two rows of your main color, or cream in my case, then what you're gonna do is you are going to start doing the color work for this pattern. So I'm gonna pull up the chart right here. This is the full, um, I, I have it zoomed in on the section of the chart that I'm starting at, and that is on this spot right here. So we have done our rows of the ribbing, we've done those two rows of the cream, and now we're going to start on this spot. So each square on this chart here counts as one stitch in the pattern. So that is what we are going to use in order to tell which stitches we need to do before we um, switch colors and as we do this color work. So how we're going to do that is since we are starting on the wrong side, we're going to chain two, turn, and then we have this strand of yarn here that I haven't undone from when I did my ribbing and I'm going to bring that up here to the top and I'm going to carry it as I do my first stitches. So I'm going to do one stitch where I'm not carrying it just so that it doesn't come to the edge and then I'm going to do the next stitch where I am carrying it and if it, it pulls a little too tight, it'll bunch it up, so make sure that it's a little bit loose. And then what we're going to do is you can use either tapestry crochet where you carry this through each stitch, or you can just use um, a combination of fair isle crochet where we just use floats for this. So we're going to do a total of four of the white. Whoops, added brown there on accident. <laughs> so we are going to do four white stitches. And on the last one, we are going to switch to our brown yarn here on that last yarn over of the stitch. And then we are going to do the stitches for the brown, which is four right there on the bottom of that spot. And I'm going to carry my yarn as I go across here. And four. And then we switch right back to using the cream to go over to the next stitch. So this is what it will look like on the front of your work. Now you can do a couple different things um, with doing these spots. So you could either um, join a bunch of bobbins at each point where we have the color right here and carry the cream all the way through. And if you don't want the brown to poke through, what you can do is just have little yarn bobbins that you join at each point where the spot starts. Because you'll see here, there's a lot that are going across, but in some points there are some bigger gaps on that. So you might have, the yarn might poke through at, at, at these points right here. So if you don't want to carry your yarn all the way across, you can just do the bobbins. Now, you will have to just keep in mind that that will add a lot more strands of yarn that can get tangled up. So you'll just want to figure out which method you want to use. But while you're working on this wrong side, just remember that you want to make sure that your yarn strands are on the side that is facing you. This prevents the yarn from um, like getting all weird and tangled on the front and it will just make it look cleaner overall. Um, and just really help differentiate the sides. So you, what you'll do for this first row, and then I'll sh is uh, just follow the chart or the written pattern for how many stitches you need to do across with changing colors and all of that. And then I'll show you how to do right side rows while reading the chart. So when you are doing color work on the right side, which will be our next row of this color work, you are going to be doing the same exact thing of changing colors whenever it switches from white to brown. 
and then you will carry your yarn along the back side, so the side that is away from you, keeping all the yarn strands on the same um, side. So we'll start this row by doing our double crochet and then switching colors. And then we will do four double crochet stitches and we can carry that cream yarn along the back and we'll do four of these just like it is on the chart. And then switch to the cream again. And what I like to do is um, just a little tip for when you work on the right side, and this applies to the wrong side as well, is to choose the side that you want your skein of yarn to be on. So I will have one on like the right, one on the left, and then I make sure that they don't cross over when I am changing colors. How you can do that is that whenever you are doing the using the yarn on your right side, you will do a yarn under, which it, or a yarn over, which is your usual way that you do um, your stitches. And then if you're doing, say, using this color to switch to, then you'll do a yarn under. So you'll go underneath the yarn. This way you don't have the yarns crossing back and forth between each other. And it makes it a lot easier to be able to um, get your stitches to look really nice and clean. So then what you'll just do is you'll keep going along with this chart here um, and you'll, or you can use the written pattern, either work. And you'll, if you're using the chart, you'll just move up one row on the chart till you get to the end of it. And then once you do that, by just following and doing these stitches and color changes for the leopard spots, then I'll show you how we will start doing our back panel. Once you are done with this first part of the panel for our poncho, what you're going to do is we are going to start forming the neckline. So the neckline for this is just where we will be crocheting to a certain point and then we will be chaining stitches and skipping over. So what I've gone ahead and done is I have crocheted 50 stitches here for my size. Each size will vary a little bit differently. And then I have put a stitch marker here and so I know, okay, this is the point where I am going to start skipping the stitches. So I have done it where I've spaced out 26 stitches here. So it will be even on both sides. So I've placed a stitch marker at each point. So I know, okay, I need to crochet up to the stitch marker here, chain the 26 stitches and skip over to the stitch on the other side of the stitch marker there. So I'll show you how you will do that in case you have never done something like this before. So you'll start by chaining the amount of stitches that you're skipping. So for me, it's 26. And then 25 and 26. And then I am going to skip all of these stitches here that are um, made up of the in between the two stitch markers. So I'm going to skip all the way over to the stitch on the opposite side of this stitch marker here. And then I am going to do just a normal double crochet. So I'll yarn over and then I'll insert my hook in this stitch on the other side of the stitch marker and then I will do a normal double crochet. So you wanna make sure that you're a little bit careful while you're doing this. One, that your stitches, um, your chains are not twisted, and two, that you don't go through um, any of the chains that you need on here when you're doing your stitch. And then once you do that, then we will continue crocheting to the end of this row, and then I'll show you how we will finish up the back panel. So for my size, I have crocheted 47 stitches and then I placed my stitch marker here and then I counted 33 stitches away from this stitch marker to place it right here on this one. Once you crochet up to your first stitch marker, then what we're going to do is we will chain 33 stitches, skip over to the stitch on the other side of this stitch marker, and then finish off our row. So I will show you how to do that here in case you have never done something like this before. So we'll start by chaining 33 stitches or however many your size says. So I have three, 
four, five, six. Twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three. Then I am going to skip all the way over to the opposite side of my stitch marker here, and I am going to do a normal double crochet. So I'll start by yarning over, inserting my hook into that next stitch, and then doing the normal double crochet. Now you want to be careful here because it's really easy, like I just did right there, to have your um, stitch get a little tangled up with your chain stitch, last chain stitch that you did. So you'll want to be careful of that. And just make sure that one, that your stitches don't get twisted, your chain stitches are not twisted, and two, that you're able to do um, your double crochet as normal instead of doing just a half double crochet. And then once you do that stitch, then you can continue crocheting all the way down to the end of this row, and then I'll show you what we will do next. Once you get to the end of that row, you are going to start forming the back panel. Now the back panel is worked off of this front panel here, and we just do that by um, doing our normal double crochet rows. So we chain two, turn, and then you just double crochet across, and you repeat this till you've done the length, the amount of rows that you did on your front panel. So it'll vary between each size. When you're double crocheting across, when you get to these chain stitches, you you will do double crochets there and that um, will just help form this neckline finishing that off by having the um, double crochets go across that. So then once you finish those double crochets then we will repeat the ribbing that we did right here and once you have finished up that back panel then I will show you how we'll seam the sides to the sleeves and doing and forming those sleeves and forming the turtleneck on this neckline here. Once you are done with both the front and back panels, then it's time to start working on the sleeves. So how we're going to do that is you are going to put right sides together. So you will have your little strands of yarn on the side that faces you. And then we are going to fold it in half. So you'll want to make sure that the bottom of your poncho lines up and is straight and you can also just judge it by okay up here on the collar um, it starts on this row and then you go all the way to the end and fold it over on that crease so after you do that what we're going to do is we are going to measure down how um, much we're going to do our armholes. So on my arm, on this lowest part, because this is about how far the um, poncho sleeve comes down to, it is about 10 inches around or like nine and a half, depending on what point of my arm that I'm measuring at. So I am going to measure about half of that measurement on the sleeve here. So you'll get out your tape measure here. And since mine are about 10 inches or nine and a half, I'm just going to measure down to the five inch mark on here. And then I'm going to take a stitch marker and I am going to pin it both of these sides together using my stitch marker. So then what you will do is you are going to use a slip stitch seam to slip stitch along the edges here to close up the part of the poncho to help form the armhole. Now, if you don't want to really have this be super open like a poncho, what you can do is you can seam all the way along the edge to the bottom, and then this will be a super oversized sweater, which would just be amazing. Um, but if you would like to have it more open, I'll show you how to do that right here. And then if you want it more closed, you just continue what I'm doing. So we'll insert our hook through both sides here at the bottom where we have our stitch marker. And then we are going to take this and do a slip stitch through there to start it. Then we are going to take our yarn and we're going to do a chain one. And then we will start slip stitching along the edge here. 
until you get to the length that you want. You go through both edges, so making sure that you go through stitches on both panels to close it up, and then you just make sure that the sides are lined up and you just go the length that you want. I'm going about three to four inches um, down on this edge here. Um, this way I just can make sure that it is like closed up on the sides and just ends more towards my back or my, <laughs> my waist. Um, but you can of course go a little bit shorter or longer than that depending on what you'd like. Okay, so I've got it closed like this. So we'll take our scissors and then we will fasten this off and then we have our seam right here. Then once you have that, we're going to flip this out to the outside so that the right sides are out and then we will begin working on the sleeve. To start the sleeve, we'll take the contrast color that we used for the spots and the edging, and then we are going to do kind of a very similar thing that we just did with the seam on the side, where we join the yarn with a slip stitch through one of the stitches, and you'll do that at the bottom of the armhole. And make sure when you start this sleeve that you are going to be crocheting along the back side first. This way, if your seam, um, has any slant to it at all, it will be towards the back so it won't show up in the front. Then once you have that, we're going to chain two and then you will double crochet around on the edge of the armhole, doing approximately um, one to two stitches on each row that we have here. And if you want your sleeves a little bit looser, you can add more stitches that you crochet around. The main thing that you'll want to do is to end on an even number. Um, and that is because we're going to be doing a one by one ribbing, so it has to be divisible by two. So go ahead and just crochet around the edge here, and I'll show you how to do the ribbing. So once you have crocheted all the way around your armhole, then you are going to join with a slip stitch to that chain two at the beginning of the round that we did, and then you'll start your ribbing. So you'll chain two, do one double crochet, and then we will always be working on the right side while doing this ribbing. So you are going to do a front post double crochet um, whenever you're doing those each time you go around. So you'll just do um, one double crochet and then one front post double crochet and you'll repeat that ribbing until you get the length of the sleeve that you want and then once you do that then you'll repeat it on the other sleeve. Once your sleeves are done, then we are going to start here on the collar of our poncho. And we're going to do a, pretty much the same thing that we did for the sleeves in terms of doing the one round of double crochet and then the rounds of ribbing. I am going to be doing a turtleneck on mine or at least a little bit higher than a normal collar, which would only be about one to one and a half inches tall. Um, but I would like it to be just really cozy for winters. So the fun thing about this collar is you can totally customize it to be however long or short you want it. You just keep repeating the rounds until you get the length you want. So let's go ahead and start it. To start the collar, we are going to come to one of these corners here on where we um, skipped the stitches when we formed the um, the headspace or <laughs> our uh, neck. And so then you're gonna join with a slip stitch we will chain two and then the really nice thing about this is that we've basically already created the stitches that you're going to be doing around because we have all these chain stitches here and then we have all the double crochets on the other side so what you'll do is you will just do a double crochet through each one of the chain stitches until you get all the way around and then once you do that just make sure you go in each of the chains on here and each of the stitches on the other side and then we will do the ribbing on here. Once you have crocheted all the way around the collar, you will join the last stitch with a slip stitch to that chain two at the beginning of this round and then you'll begin your ribbing. So you'll start by chaining two and then we're doing the same ribbing we've been doing um, whenever ribbings come up in this pattern where we do one double crochet but this time because we are doing it always on the right side we're going to do a front post double crochet so you won't be turning this at all 
it'll just be doing the one stitch then going and doing a front post double crochet and you will just repeat that all the way around until you get the length of the collar that you would like once you are all done with the collar and the sleeves for your poncho, then you are all done and you have a beautiful brand new snow leopard poncho that you get to wear. Well, I hope that you enjoy your brand new snow leopard poncho. I absolutely love wearing this pattern, making this pattern. It's so cozy and I can see it quickly becoming one of my wardrobe staples. If you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit that like button below so I know that you enjoyed this video tutorial and subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on any of my crochet videos. I hope that you love making this pattern and that you have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you next time. Thank Bye. you so much for watching this video be sure to like it below if you enjoyed watching it and hit the subscribe button if you never want to miss out a video from me and also check out my other videos and tutorials on my channel see you next time